for the second half of this new nug, we're doing Roblox. Why? Because dad thought I could do it. So uh, what is Roblox? Well, it's, uh, it's your gaming platform, but uh, more specifically, we're gonna use Roblox Studio, which is uh, basically how all the games got onto Roblox. Uh, since Roblox is a community engine, uh, the anyone can uh, go onto the Roblox Studio and make their own games. Uh, there are a couple of pros and cons with Roblox. Uh, Pros include that uh, the Roblox Studio is relatively easy to use. And uh, another one is that there's lots of reference material, uh, though it's all YouTube videos. None of it's really official. And uh, it's also really easy to get it out there and get people playing it because you just publish it to the Roblox uh, player and anyone can find it and play it. Uh, some of the cons is that it can be complex and frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but once you know what you're doing, it, it, it's much easier to use. And another con, depending on how you look at it, is that uh, Roblox uses Lua. Um, the only reason I call that a con is because uh, Lua is not as common. Uh, most people when they're learning programming, they're learning, you know, like Java, C++, you know, those kinds of things. Lua is kind of weird. But if you know Lua, then it's not that big a deal. So a uh, couple things to note about both Roblox and this presentation. I am not an expert. <laughs> Despite what dad thinks, I'm not really an expert at this. Uh, second, Roblox does use Lua. Uh, it's kind of, it can be difficult to use. And, uh, but one, one of the bigger limitations of Roblox is that it can't, or sorry, uh, Lua is the only uh, language it supports. It doesn't support anything else. Uh, also, Roblox uses a lot of modeling, uh, like modeling assets, modeling worlds, you know. And in fact, it's so modeling heavy that you could uh, get away with making a totally workable game by doing little or no scripting, just doing the modeling. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have for the presentation part of it. Most of it, most of what I got is live demo. So let's get started with that. So I'm gonna open up Roblox Studio. So the first thing that you'll see in Roblox Studio is uh, this screen, this template screen. And this is, like this is where a lot of the games can come from, especially if you're lazier and you just want to make something simple, uh, especially like Capture the Flag, Team Fighter, or FFA, uh, and a Line Runner. Those are like three games that are really easy to make. You just do very little modification. Uh, I'm, however, going to use this classic faceplate. So it's a lot of a lot like the uh, Unity editor, actually. There's a lot of similarities. It's the same basic, wait with my hand. It's the same basic thing, uh, like play screen. Uh, you have your uh, explore, which is like your hierarchy. Uh, you have the properties tab, which is like the, uh, I can't think of it. Well, the properties. It's, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. I forgot. I forgot the unity parallel. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so 
uh, I promised in the uh, description that we'd make a little pirate game. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need for pirates is, well, a boat. So this is where the modeling comes in. So up here we have a model tab, and this is basically ground zero for, for just about everything modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and create a part here. And we will make ourselves a boat out of this part. So one, one thing to note real quick is when I was first uh, making this game, uh, I had modeled myself a really nice boat. And I'm like, okay, now it's time to get it to move and work. And that was a mistake. It was a absolute pain in the butt to try and get my boat to move after I had modeled it. So I'd say the number one thing to remember when modeling a uh, thing that's going to move in your game is to script it first. So uh, this so this block here will be the base of my uh, boat. So I'm going to use the scale tool, just kind of set a little square here, and then uh, to move to move things around in Roblox, you need to have a speed on it. And I'm just going to use this one right here. Uh, I made this one earlier. Vehicle seats, mostly you can just kind of pull them out of this toolbox, uh, which has public assets. I'm just using one of my own assets for this. And then we're also going to need two more uh, parts. So uh, let's quickly, I'm going to quickly rename these. This one will be my base. This one will be. <laughs> And so in order to get this all to work, this engine needs to uh, have a body body thrust component. This is what's going to get our uh, boat to actually move back and forth. And then the, the steer block, as you might guess, needs something for it to steer. So we're going to put a body angular velocity on it. Um, so one other thing to note about Roblox especially is that putting things together is weird. If I, uh, in fact, I can. Actually, no, I have a script. Oh, yeah, I do have a script. So uh, if I start the game right now, And this is another nice thing. I can just play right here. So you notice, here's all the pieces I have, but they're just kind of there. And in fact, this this piece is going wild. No, none of it's sticking together. So Roblox is kind of annoying in that I need to come here. I need to come down to this create and weld. I need to actually like weld the pieces together like if I was in real life making this out of steel. So you see that so that green line there tells me that this piece and this piece are now welded together. They will they will stay like that forever now. So I'm gonna quickly weld everything else together. So now if I play You know, it's everything stays together, and I have to say. Uh, so, but this doesn't look like a boat, and the first step to making it look like one is to get a material on it. And this is one really cool thing about Roblox, in my opinion, is that it's so easy to get materials and color onto your stuff. Because I can just come up here to this material, Say, let's see, I want wood planks and I'm done. I can then just choose color, like, let's see, that looks nice. Nice 
brownish wood and it looks like it looks really nice that that could take me a while to do in something like unity or blender and then i can just apply this to everything else okay so uh this vehicle seat i have already has the script with it uh, but I'll go over the code real quick. So this is all Lua, and I can make this bigger real quick. So this is all Lua, and like I mentioned before, I'm not an expert, and the scripting in Lua is probably my weakest part of my Roblox abilities right now. Uh, that being said, however, uh, this script is actually really simple. Like. All we're doing is defining some uh, pieces up here, some speeds, and then it's very, it's very simple. It's just if we uh, ask the boat to go forward, we give it some forward speed and multiply it by our throttle. And same with the uh, angular velocity of the steering. And you might notice up here, I have some rather large numbers. This is really just because my first boat, uh, because I modeled my first boat before I scripted it, it got too heavy for smaller numbers to move and it would just sit there. And this is one reason why I say it can be frustrating because I didn't know that uh, like the script wasn't powerful enough, if you will, to move the boat. So, uh, so with our seat modeled and with our steering and thrust taken care of, we can now actually like model this boat. So we can, so with these tools up here, we can move it, scale it, and, and rotate any piece we want. I really like the scale tool because it makes it really easy to model everything really quick. And I can just, like, go. I'm lazy, however, so I'm not going to actually model an entire boat. I'm just gonna pull this boat that I already modeled in. So this is exactly the same thing. Uh, got the same seat, got the same steering. Uh, it's just the entire boat's been modeled uh, and everything's welded together. Um, Oh, there's one other important thing about the modeling, especially when making something like a boat. Uh, the weight and density of the pieces matter. And what I mean by that is uh, Roblox actually takes this piece here, like it will take this piece and it'll say, okay, it's a slab of wood. It should weigh this much and it should be about this dense. And it's actually, a, because it's a physics driven engine, this can mess up a bunch of things. So uh, what I ended up doing was coming down to some of these bottom pieces here and telling them to uh, be less dense than uh, the water that they're in. So real quick, I'm just gonna throw some sails on here. Does anyone have any questions or you good? No, uh, keep going. Okay. So I, I had a question about the, the boat skeleton. So you put that all together or was, or was that something you could go out and grab? And I mean, are these things like in GitHub or places where you can get to stuff easy? Uh, yes and also yes. So uh, this boat 
itself, I actually modeled. Uh, but you can uh, go out and get uh, just other people's models because uh, Roblox supports this toolbox, which just has all sorts of public uh, models that you can use. So if I just search up boat, it just gives me a ton of stuff I can use. I can just throw it straight into my game. That's cool. Now, do do some of these uh, models, do they cost or, or is most of it just like nope. community it, stuff? No, it's all free. Okay. If, it, if it shows up in here, it's free. It's ready for you to use. That's cool. Thanks. So where do I check uh, for those models, like the free ones? How do I get those? So when you open up the uh, Roblox editor, it'll have this toolbox open on the side, and that's where you can find them all. If it's not open or you close it, uh, you can go to this view and then click toolbox. Thank you. Okay, so there's uh, one other thing to note when modeling, and that is grouping, which is taking all these and making it one single thing. And that's, and you just, it's really simple. You just do control G and now it's one piece so I can move it around instead of all the hundreds of pieces that this is made of. What is the difference between grouping and welding? Ah. Grouping, basically all it does is it, it like kind of creates a folder over here and it just makes it so that when you grab it, you grab all the pieces in that group instead of just each individual piece. Welding is where I take this piece and I like physically weld it to this. So these two will not come apart unless I like make a script event or something to do that. So grouped does not necessarily indicate welded. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So things could fly apart still if you didn't do this wrong. Right. Even though they're grouped together. When you're scripting it, that is. Sorry. So say things could still possibly fly apart if yeah, uh, things they're grouped. Fly apart but not welded. Yes. Also, yeah, like if this wasn't welded, like here I can actually just, uh, just these simple things. Even if I group it, so it's grouped now, if I hit play, I can just come over here and knock this down. Whereas if I come over to my boat over here, I can't do that because all the pieces are welded together. Okay. So, so I had a question about the little guy that's running around. Is that yeah. just part of the game? All games have that, or, or, or can you make the, can you programmatically make the little guy run in specific ways? And so this guy right here, them? yeah. Okay, so Roblox uh, makes it so that every person has their own avatar, okay. uh, which is just their little character. This is my personal one. Uh, but you can also make it so that everyone's looks the same. 
so you can control yours if there's somebody else that's playing the same game as you they can do all that as well with their yeah, own they avatar control, yeah they control their own avatar and and how is this related to like some of these objects that are out there that if if one of these guys tries to jump up on the boat it's all physics it just happens kind of uh roblox just makes it to my understanding roblox just makes each of these little avatars just another model just like this boat it's just animated and uh directly controlled by the keyboard and mouse okay so you you can't control them by writing code for the avatar is that right no okay no not as, not as far as i'm aware at least but if you're going to make like a racing game and you wanted the guy to be in a racing suit and you wanted the guy to look like, you know, Mario Andretti, could you do that? Or do you have to go with whatever sprite that they have chosen as their default? No, you can uh, make everyone in their in your game look however you want them to. But if you don't, then everyone will have their own custom avatar. Thanks, I didn't mean to get you off track. <laughs> no problem. So, I'm just gonna regroup all these. All right. So, uh, we have a boat, but we don't have water. So that's our next step. And this is actually, in my opinion, the coolest thing about Roblox. And that is that I can just use this uh, editor up here, the terrain editor, and I can just make a terrain. It's really, I think this is like the coolest part. So if I hit generate, I get this box showing up and I'm actually going to delete the base plate and get it out of the way. And then I can just hit generate down here and if you give it a second, that ship looks rather landlocked. Yeah, it's a little landlocked, but it generated this entire thing. I didn't have to do anything other than click the button. And this isn't the only one you got because I can uh, change which biomes, as it calls them here. So I can have it be like a canyon biome or uh, this lava scape biome or an Arctic biome or, you know, and I can even combine them like we kind of see here, where this is more of like a plains and mountains and lava scape encroaching on it. So I think this is not only really cool, but really handy because it means you instantly have uh, a field for you to have your cannon battles on. You can instantly make an ocean like I'm about to do. And it just makes it so much easier. And now my boat is no longer landlocked. But there's actually even more you can do with this train editor. So no, it's airlocked. Think, yeah, it'll fall. There's gravity. But there's even more I can do with this. So I can actually edit by hand this entire scene. And I can just place land, make some islands, do whatever I want. And I can even get even more technical. I can use cubes to do it. I use this. Uh, I can also uh, subtract stuff, erase it. I can, for finer control, I can grow things. I can erode things. I can smooth things. I can just straight out flatten it. 
and I can paint it, which means I can change the actual material it is. Now all this is cobblestone. Now it's mud, you know. And you can use this to create any sort of environment you'd like. I'm actually going to leave that just a little island. And uh, that's actually pretty much all I got. Because the last step really is to make a game out of this. Uh, and to, to do that, you need to kind of see, you know, okay, what am I doing here? I have my boat, what, what am I doing with my boat? Uh, I have I have the islands, what's, what's on the island? Why would I want to go to the island? Uh, I actually made a full-on pirate game. Real quick. Uh, where it's uh, capture the flag and use the boats to get yourself uh, from one island to the other. So, yeah, you can see I have my custom island in the middle here. I have Islands over here with boat stocks on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so. So what are the basic components of making a game? So you create the models and then the scripting is for the models to be interacted with. Is there yeah. anything else that you anything else that you need to make the game? Technically, no. If you're thinking about it on a really technical level, like you really only do need the uh, models, the and the scripts to have models interact. Okay. Um, but if you like actually want to like make a full on game, you need to think about things like objectives, uh, who's fighting who, uh, bonuses like uh, these little ships out here that you can try and steal. So uh, this game that you made, is it a first-person game or a, like a ship-centric game? Uh, it's a bit of both, actually. I can actually play it. Uh, it's actually a third person where the camera's like behind you. Uh, and you can sit on the boat and steer the boat that way. Probably reduce the timer a little bit. Yeah. So this is also a multiplayer game then, huh? It is a multiplayer. I was going to show that off, but Grace is ignoring me. So you can see I'm here. I have my SMG because all pirates had their SMGs. <laughs> you know, I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can shoot at people. And... OK. All right. So let's see the moving around. I can just sit here. It's... So I'm, you know, moving not too fast a pace. And it actually took me a little while to get the like speed of the boat and the steering like to work nice. But So it's like, like the way you got the models for like some of the pieces, like the boats and everything. Can you also get terrain like that? So like, if you wanted to like <clears throat> have something like, you know, delicate arch or maybe some other scenery or or places, is is there models that are like terrain type models? Uh, kind of. You can get models that are like, like actual like models, like this kind of thing, which makes a terrain. Uh, or you can get like skyboxes, which is like just sky. Uh, and you can get things to like augment the actual terrain, like furniture, buildings, things like that. Okay. 
So I have a licensed copy of Bryce, for example. So if I were to go and generate a canyon in there, can I import it in here? Um, I honestly don't know. Isn't that kind of one of its downsides is you really can't import models built outside of here. You kind of have to build them in yeah, here. Yeah, you, re you really do have to build models inside of Roblox for it to work. And uh, there's some like uh, physics that accompany terrain that is special from most other surfaces. So while yeah. you could have something that this, just someone just built this enormous model that's, you know, the, the Grand Canyon or whatever, <clears throat> the uh, practicality of that is it probably wouldn't work all that well. Yeah. And like you couldn't make it both like with models like, like the boat here or with the train editing. Like if you really wanted to put time into making yourself a Bryce Canyon in Roblox, you could totally do it. But is it feasible? Is it feasible? Like, what do you mean? Is it doable? Is it doable? Totally. Well, I mean, is it feasible from a business standpoint? Like, can I get it out within two weeks? Uh, it depends. I'd say not really, especially considering that, like, if I go over here, you can just come over here, <clears throat> say, editor, create uh, canyons, and you're done. Be like, this, this is by no means Bryce Canyon. Holy that's pretty f cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's not Bryce Canyon, clearly, but, you know, it's cool and it works. So if you really wanted to, yes, you could go and model out Bryce Canyon, but there's really no point. Wait, uh, uh, can, can, you, can you show me how to do that? That's, that's, I, I got to do that right now. That's awesome. Okay, what do I click to um, do that? So you open up the train editor up here. Okay. And... Uh, just hit generate. Then uh, for this one, I just hit canyons and I turned off caves. I actually really don't know why caves is automatically on. Okay. Then you just hit generate. Okay, cool. Thanks. So is there any way you could take like images, like some kind of um, Google, Google map or something like that, and then bring it in here somehow and build it? build like a city based on the map uh kind of i know you can import images and stuff because these cells are actually just two images stuck back to back okay um and i've seen skyboxes where someone's taken like a 360 degree picture and they've actually turned that into their skybox um, but as far as like taking a picture of like a cityscape and then just throwing it in here, you'd really just have <clears throat> reference material. That's really all you'd have. Okay. Now, just when you of, when you build some, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, can you uh, import models in any other format, like you know, STL, like in the model tab? Is there no import of anything? There is an import, I believe. Let's see. There might have been an import. Actually, no, I don't think you can. Okay, that was my question. Sorry, right. another guy. <laughs> so, for when you build some of these things, can you also, like when you're doing that caves and the canyons and all that? Can yep. you um, can you publish that so it would become a model or some kind of a model terrain or something? Kind of. So, and when you publish it, how many does everybody have access to it then? Uh, not really, because uh, let's see, they can. 
Oh, maybe you can. But like I said earlier, I'm not an expert with this. So there's probably a lot of things that I don't know. Uh, this is probably one of them. Oh. I thought there was a way you, you could uh, like copy it around, but maybe there's not. And so like, like when you were talking about like objectives and stuff, do you have mm -hmm. some way that you have, have you ever built something where you have like some kind of scoring component where, you know, based on number of shots you gain score? Uh, yeah, so in uh, my finished version, it's a, it's a capture the flag. So this flag right here is flag over in the red base and yeah, you know, if you get red flag to blue flag, blue scores. Um, and all that's shown up in the UI by the timer. I also know that you can uh, get it so that, like, over by where it shows everyone's names, it will show, like, kills or points or, you know, whatever you need. And and you can control that, or is that mostly controlled by no, you can No, you can control that. So can you make your avatar talk to people so you can be talking back and forth and um, moving around with them? And there's a chat that Roblox supports, but, and I think it might support voice comms, but uh, as far as like your uh, character, like saying things like at scripted events or something, uh, the best I've seen is just like a UI element that just kind of has text on it. So are there like bots or anything that will like talk to you or? You could uh, yeah, that. just like, it'll just be like a little uh, model that's just sitting on the ground that you walk up to and like push up and it'll uh, display like a little UI text box. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to ask them any questions. No, no, you're good. Any other questions? How many players in multiplayer would it support? Uh, I believe the maximum per server is 50 players. And I can have several servers running up at once. So. Those servers wouldn't run in concurrently on the same game instance, would they? No, no, they'd okay, be right. separate game instances. So when you have a server, are you spinning that, this up like on AWS or, or is this something no, this is, Roadblox already has out there for people? No, this is something fully supported by Roblox. Okay, well, it sounds like we're out of questions, right? Thanks. Thank you. Great talk tonight. Thanks, guys.